All right, guys, Dominic Izzo is our link shot out here in Chicago. Hope you guys are doing well. Listen, I like to uh, I'm gonna continue on with some of these critique videos. And um, I thought about this one for a while. It's like whether or not it was to stick my nose into this one, but I kind of did. And I'm gonna I really want to offer this on a on a a point of teaching, not just being critical and sure as hell not being a jag, because you know I like to get uh, in the mud. But um, I'm a big supporter of black rhino martial arts. My uh, friend Sifu Howard, uh, I think he's got one of the best Jeet Kune Do uh, channels on the internet. Um, he's way too humble. Him and I, we talk. You know, we talk uh, online and uh, we communicate. And I'm going to throw him under the bus here. I think he's his level of humility a far surpasses mine. B, his level of teaching ability. If you guys watch Black Rhino Martial Arts, number one, his video editing content, he, he puts up unbelievable videos. They really are, un, they're great to watch. Um, I don't ever think I've made it really a secret. I don't like the Jeet Kune Do community. I don't really like the fucking Wing Chun community either, right? Um, so it's I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a walking hi, uh, hypocrite to where I support a community that we just, we're all over each other, this and that. I think the Jeet Kune Do community is the same. There's a few Jeet Kune Do practitioners over the years that I've met uh, who are just, they're all around great guys. Um, <clears throat> I talk about the Ice Crew uh, 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 over in California. Um, Brandon's a great damn guy. I talk to him online every now and then. I think he's freaking phenomenal. Uh, Mike Van Beek, I mean, come on, dude. The guy's a class act, and he's just an animal, and he's so he's a wonderful human being. Mike Van Beek, uh, I can't talk enough about him. He's Jeet Kune Do based. And then uh, Sifu Singh, that, that guy, he's awesome. Sifu Singh is a great human being as well, too. So there's, I'm always going to base this off of human beings I've met, right? And when it comes down to the Jeet Kune Do community, those guys specifically – you know, Howard, Mike, uh, uh, Singh, and uh, Brandon, they've never looked at my Wing Chun and gone, oh, you know, well, Bruce meant this, or oh, it's this and this and that, this and that. They've let me be me, and that's what will open the door for me to hear what other people are saying. Because I am a very closed-off listener when somebody does what I guiltily do sometimes, which is, no, that's not right. I do admit that there are times where I'm like, no, this is wrong. The whole video I did in the William Chung lineage, I will put it's always my my... My experience, it's my training for why I do this. This is my concepts and thoughts why I disagree with this. But I don't ever come out and just flat out say something's wrong for the sake of it being wrong. Because in the long run, there's nothing right and there's nothing wrong to begin with. Um, Black Rhino Martial Arts, make sure you support that YouTube channel. I honestly think that if uh, Sifu Howard would get his head out of his ass, he'd be one of the biggest... Uh, uh, JKD channels on YouTube, but he's just too humble for his own good right now. And over time, maybe he'll grow. But I watched a couple different guys who I was actually shocked were criticizing him. Um, and, I, and I watch people in the comment section talk shit who really have no business being talking shit. Uh, Al, Alan Richter from New York, uh, Lung Ting Lineage. I'm not a fan of him. He's a clown. Uh, I just uh, It's a personality conflict. I don't like him. Uh, I, years and years and years ago, I think he commented on something I did. I just didn't re respect what he said. Um, him... People who, who are criticizing Howard, uh, uh, Thomas uh, uh, Marks, who I'm going to talk about today, and of all people, Tommy Carruthers. It just shows the immaturity of this art that we're in, right? And again, I know I've said this many times. I know I'm part, I'm part of the problem, but if this is how things are going to go, then fuck, I'm going to keep uh, fighting dirty in the mud because this is how we all are. I'm not one of those Zen Buddhist you know, purist martial artist who thinks that we've all got to get... I don't fucking act that way. That's not how I am. It's not how I am in real life. In real life, I'm very much... I'm quiet. Uh, hey, I'll get along with you just to keep your shit out of my, out of, get out of my face. Um, but I was really kind of upset to see that people like Tommy Carruthers, of all people, were insulting people who were trying to continue things that he started when he's basically a carbon copy lookalike of Bruce Lee. Now, don't let me, don't let me, I'm not going to disrespect Tommy in that way. He's a savage man. He comes from a place where they fought for fucking life, right? I respect Tommy's ability. But my God, you're one of the guys who came on to, to the internet, showed off your speed, showed off your, your, your Chinese dinner jacket uh, uh, videos, and all of us watched it. We were all impressed. Is it a shock to think that people, thousands of people across the world would try to emulate you and duplicate stuff and then put their own spin on things? 
I don't know why why people like him have to come out and insult people who are trying to take things into the next generation. Unless everybody, it, it blows me away. Here's why Jeet Kune Do bothers me. It's only what, 50, 60 years old? It, not, it hasn't even evolved yet. And once it's evolved, and it's still, if you if you go back to the uh, the JKD community, it's Bruce. It, it, even if Dan Inasanto himself, who probably knew Bruce Lee better than anybody, says Bruce never intended this to be a martial art. Isn't it amazing how the stories just keep going forward? Well, what Bruce meant was, and this is what Bruce meant was, and this is what Bruce meant was. It's worse than trying to sit there and translate the Bible in your own opinion. Jeet Kune Do is, in the, is it's not even old. It's like Krav Maga. It's not even old enough to have evolved through anything yet. So it's still the old tigers are out there, like Tommy, who's got the closer you are to that Bruce Lee himself, the more validity you have when you think about it. The further away from Bruce Lee that you are, the more powerful your concept of Jeet Kune Do should be. It really should be. If you are backing up authenticity for what you claim Jeet Kune Do is. So I want to talk about this for a second today. I came across this video. Uh, this is Wing Chun Evolution into Boxing. Uh, this is by Thomas Marks. And the reason I'm doing this one, and I'm, not, I tr I'm really going to try not to get too, um, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, offensive, if you will, is that <clears throat> I got to figure out how to do this one again? Uh, I, I was bothered by the fact that Thomas Marks, of all people, um, was insulting or being critical of, of of other people trying to do work, and this is crap. And I watched a bunch of his videos. This is crap. This is crap. This is crap. I will say this to begin with: I'm not impressed with your martial arts. I'm not impressed with Jeet Kune Do. You look like Tommy Carruthers, who looks like. Uh, 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 Bruce, Bruce Lee, everything, everything. And go ahead and comment below, guys, whatever you think. Everything in the Jeet Kune Do community looks exactly like Bruce Lee does. But the same thing can be said for Sam Kwok's lineage, Ip Chun's lineage, Wang Chung Lung's lineage, Dave Meadows lineage. We all, you look like your teacher. You try to get evolved, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, Break down, because I haven't watched this yet, your video of Wing Chun Evolution to Boxing, and I'm going to help you evolve and correct your Wing Chun knowledge, which I already know you don't have. So hopefully you take this as me uh, uh, being a, a mentor to you in Wing Chun and explaining what you're misrepresenting. Because if you're going to call the people's stuff crap, then i got to put my money where my mouth is and let you know why your stuff uh, is inaccurately representing, misrepresenting Wing Chun. This or this. The very first movement, we're gonna look at that for a second. We're gonna look at your, uh, your air quotes chain punching. This? Yeah, let's, let's, we're gonna, oy. That, right there, that's number one. That's, and this is for the Wing Chun community itself too. If we are passing along this and somebody is standing erect, squared up, and they're locking out their elbows, doing wing or chain punches rigidly like this, then we're doing a bad job misrepresenting our art. I did a video the other day talking about what the straight blast really is, and it's not what you think it is. It's simply a bridging the gap, recovering context of uh, video. The best, in my opinion, the, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, the absolute best example of bridging the gap using a straight blast is Dan the Wolfman. He's got two matches up online on his channel, Dan the Wolfman, uh, where he did exactly what a straight blast is. It's getting your opponent to be like, oh, it's, it's bridging the gap. That's all it is. There's no, there's no real power behind it. It's just bridging the gap. That's all it is. Let's continue. This or this? This is Thomas right, Marks, guys. JKD. Today we're going to compare straight blast. And hooks. I got to give him credit for this. this is Thomas Marks, M A R X, uh, Jeet Kune Do on YouTube. And how Jeet Kune Do evolved, where Bruce did mainly chain punching, and then later on he switched to more boxing style. So, judging from a comment section, many people are still not sure or don't really understand what is more beneficial using hooks compared to straight blast and chain punching. That's what we're going to talk about. We'll solve that right now. Circumstances dictate tactics. There's no beneficial for one over the other. And we have to stop thinking that way. It's whatever the situation is, is what dictates tactics. That's it. Like the guy you're facing with, you're clearly a whole entire head taller than him. 
What's going to be more beneficial for him, hook punches or chain punches? I uh, He's got to get in on you first. We don't know. And then once he gets in on you, is he going to have enough power to wind up giving you any type of uh, strike that could be done? I mean, shit. So it, in your distance, you could chain punch him all day long and be fine. Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson. You remember that boxing match? All Lennox did for the entire match was jab him. Kept Tyson out. That's how he won. Talk about today. When you look at the mechanics of straight blast, it's more square and you have more a fixed position compared to your opponent. So when you punch your opponent like this and he moves and you have to chase him and if he goes right or left, you basically stay all the time in his front and attack him at the same line. I'm sorry whoever told you that, they were wrong and that's level one, that's a basic level concept. You just taught a concept. You didn't teach the application. And I don't blame you because you probably don't have legitimate Wing Chun training. And if you're learning from Bruce Lee, remember, Bruce Lee only had a couple of years of Wing Chun before he left. And if he didn't understand the concept in order to put it in application, this is where we're at today. This is the Wing Chun community's fault. That's training. That's the same. What you just taught right there and passed off to make it sound like it's the chain punch is the equivalent to uh, uh, getting a boxer to do speed bag training and then saying, yeah, you use those strikes in the in the ring. Huh? Or, yeah, that, no, that's, that's where you get a strike. To, or or, or uh, friggin' uh, Makiwara board and have somebody just, uh, no, go do that. Just go do that. They're tools. The this, this straight blast is not, it's a concept. And it really doesn't, it's not limited to fists only. You can literally pull any tool from Wing Chun and put it in a, ch a straight blast, uh, which isn't even Wing Chun, a chain punch concept. It's a bicycle chain, right? If one strike is going down range, as it comes back, the other one goes right over the top of it. As another one's coming back, something else comes over the top of it. Then another comes over the It doesn't matter. You could throw in elbows. You could throw in a fox out. You could throw in palm strikes. It doesn't make a difference. And it doesn't have to be at the head. It's you spreading out your shots. It could be a liver shot, solar plexus, curvature of the jaw, back down to the other side. It doesn't make a difference. That's the problem with the straight blast is they were not taught it the right way or what it's all about. Also because of the nature of this kind of punching, there's not a lot of body weight behind it, at least not when you compare it to hooks. When you punch hooks, you... Well, that's, a, that's incorrect too as well. So let's break down a bench press. Okay, if you're laying on your back and your elbows are flared out to the side and you put weight on the bar, based on the pressure that's coming in and the alignment of your elbows, you're not going to be able to handle as much weight as if you turn your elbows in, connect your lats, and then you're, it's, it's just mechanics, it's body mechanics, right? You're actually 100% wrong in this concept. Because if I have a straight arm going down and my elbows push down and I have a locked position, my entire body weight reinforces the movement coming out. And we could see this in just by walking into you. I've done millions of demonstrations on this. You literally put a hand on somebody, elbow position. If you walk into them while keeping your arm in that position, you're going to put your entire body mass into them. The second your elbow, elbow flares out to the side, i.e. a hook punch, well then just like electricity... It's going to find the path of least resistance, and it's going to be hinged. It's, it's going to get dissipate out that way. So, honestly, you are factually, biomechanically, and physically incorrect. Now, if you're talking about generating torque and turning power, yeah, there's going to be a difference between putting your hook punch with a torque, with your hips, with turning, and a turning punch, which we have in Wing Chun, which still has the same mechanics. But again, you are discrediting body mechanics, and that's because you were not taught this correctly. Put all your body weight behind. When you see when you go chain punch, you go like this. Yeah, that's not what it is. A couple different things. Look at this, guys. On the on the look at your student. Your student is not even remotely stepping the right way. If we broke this down, the Wing Chun method, he's got majority of his weight on his front leg instead of 50-50 or a 70-30 just to put that weight into it. Again, something I'm not a fan of. And he's he's walking into, there's, you can just visually see this, it's only hand. He doesn't even have his intent in his elbows, his intent in his hand. So if this is how you're teaching your student, then again, you're just you're just not teaching correct Wing Chun. So I don't know how you can evolve from something that you personally don't know. 
okay? You just step forward. There's not a lot of body weight, a lot of... If you look at a student right there, a student is on his toe. A student on that back leg, that's a 50-50 stance, but they've got the traditional JKD boxing stance, which, again, I've talked about in footwork, why that's a bad position to be on the ball of your foot, on the back, especially for recovery going backwards, and he's got no power from it. Hip movement when you punch, and this should actually be close quarter technique. So people always argue in the internet, well, you can use chain punching in a small room, like a bathroom or like a like in a Oh, and you're you're plugging Tommy Carruthers, so this is where this is at. I see his website. Yeah, you can, especially when you understand that chain punch is a concept; it's not a technique. Old area where people are beside you. Well, here's the thing: small room, crowded area. It cannot get much closer than this. Now look at this. Or here. Yeah, we have that same thing. It's called it's Yuma. See, the problem is with Yuma. People don't think it's just turning. It's rising and sinking. See, again, this is this is why Bruce. I don't think Bruce Lee got to the second form of Chum Q. Chum Q, in my opinion, is the best form in Wing Chun. If you have never studied, and it's my favorite, yeah, the dummy's great third form, emergency techniques. I don't know what technique in a fight is not an emergency technique. All that stuff is fantastic. Even Selim Dao is great. The Yuma you develop from Chum Q and the separation from your waist and your hips is in May. It's, 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 it's game changing if you've never studied chum q break it apart it is phenomenal you must rising and sinking so close quarter i'm five foot seven i mean thomas you look like you're six one right i don't know you get in close with me that inch power you guys think that bruce lee developed so that came from wing chun it's not at the tail end of a fist at the end of a knuckles it starts in your spine you get in close to somebody who knows how to use their Yuma, we're dropping you, and you're not going to know what hit you. So it's not exclusive. If you did it with the same intent that you're having your student hit now in the body mechanics that a straight punch from Wing Chun delivers, you'd see that it's the same thing. But you're being disingenuous in this video. Basically, you're lying in this video by having your student deliver power in that way, but not with a straight punch with any Yuma. Whoa. Close quarter, or here. That's that's my all hand. Is here. By the way, that's all hand. You can see it. He's leading with his hand. He's got no. He's got no yuma. And he punches. Yeah, that's it. You can even combine. So you see, compared to this. That's a load of bullshit. That's a load of bullshit. <laughs> now you're just fucking with your students to get more students in there. <laughs> okay. Deliver Yuma in there. It, it, it blows me away that this is what these shit bags sell for Jeet Kune Do when they have no clue what Wing Chun is. You apply the same concept with Yuma stepping properly and you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna hear and see a difference. Okay. We don't practice this for a reason. So imagine how many... Hey, you don't practice it because you don't know it. The chain punches you need to knock out a person. I mean, if you take a pads and you let a person uh, punch with a chain punch, or you take a pads and let a person who can actually hook punch, you need probably just one shot, one hook. The problem is, too, as you guys recover, you guys put in those... The reason why the straight punch is superior is it leaves a position for recovery. You, you, you're correct on that. How many straight punches is it going to take to knock somebody out? How many hook punches is it? You've seen people that could take two, three, five hits, and they're still standing. It happens all the time in street fights and MMA. The problem with the hook punch is you're crossing over your meridian, right, your center line, so you're just going to recover slower than you would going straight down. It's one of the biggest things, like the wooden dummy. I talk about this, too, nonstop. A lot of people think the wooden dummy is for <clears throat> training purposes when you don't have a partner and you toughen up your arms. No, it's about recovery. It's really about facing and recovery. Are you, you, you can't move the arms, which means you have to move your bodies. Oh, this is where I should be for recovery position for my center line. <clears throat> it's nonstop with that. 
So this this is the garbage Jeet Kune Do out there that is A, making Jeet Kune Do look horrible. B, it's showing they don't know anything about Wing Chun. And C, it's disingenuous because they're lying to their students. And I hope you're not misrepresenting Tommy Carruthers on this because if that's the case, I would be really Really upset to see that he. This is something he does for the years, and he is a, he's allied to his students. And that's it. When we stand here, when he does the hook punch, he can move at the same time. So he punch. Yeah. Why would you move and expose your your flank? That's why we do straight punches and we face. It's because it's faster recovery. But you know what? This is evolution. You weren't taught. Punches a person like me, and he moves. He changes his position. This can also Poorly. be in the other direction here. So, and when he combines, he can change. That's another thing, and I, I don't know if we'll do it, let's see. Change his position from left to right. See that, that yeah, that, that whole like strong side lead, that's a grappler's wet dream, man. If you wind up crossing your center line with a hook and a grappler, you're gonna be taken down every time. And I know this because I spent all of my life wrestling. So he is a moving target and he attacks at the same time. So it's difficult for the opponent. The opponent has to chase him. And now imagine the opponent is actually the one who does the chain punch. And when he would does the chain punch and I would hook and he comes with the chain punch and I hook and I move and I punch him. That's why we don't enter that way. That's one of the biggest misconceptions of Wing Chun. You guys think this is the stance. And, and, and you know what? I mean, I'm sure I had a lot to do with that too back 10 years ago. It's, it's, we don't open with that movement. I don't know what movement you would open with. If you're close enough, yeah, and you blast straight up, you're not going to see it, right? But again, it's to create an opening. So this is more disingenuous shit because you're, you're, you're also talking about facing. I can 100% guarantee you that if you knew, you had somebody who understood the concept of facing center line attack, all of your, your angling wouldn't matter, be, matter because that's what we do is we recover faster than you do by staying on center. Ugh. While he comes here, when you punch here, you have all these openings here, 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 and I can punch him even with strength. And part of the, part, part of the point of the, the center line attack is to dissipate the energy that comes in. So all things being equal, while you're throwing the hook punch and I'm hitting a straight blast at you, I'm getting to you A first. Let's just go with your theory. It may not be enough power, but as you're being hit, especially with those body mechanics, and I'm stepping in, you are then being shunted back and it's dissipating the power that's coming at me with a hit. I'd rather be hit by that than just standing straight there like you're teaching uh, people to do with your students, poor example of Wing Chun. Traits, I can punch him with hooks. I can even go here under and punch him with single punches or even combinations. For me, in order to go like here and he moves away or he goes to the side, I have to chase him. When I use the hook, he goes to the side. Go here, go where I can catch him. When he goes here to the, I punch here, he goes to the side. I can catch him here. I go here, goes to the side. I can catch him here, I go here. I don't have to position my whole body to chase him. In Lei Jeet Kune Do, you can actually punch in any direction by using different techniques. You go here, he goes there, you can use a back fist. He goes there, you can here use, use a hook. So you can use the different punches for different angles. You can use it far more effective. Yeah, you, cl you, you don't know Wing Chun. And I, I mean, it is what it is. I'll let this play out. It's got about uh, one, 55 seconds left, sir. 59 seconds left. Sure and because you put all the weight in your techniques, especially yeah. hooks, you rotate your body, you do the step. I'll say this too, guys. If you don't have good footwork or if you're on ice or if you're on shit uh, grass and you put all of your weight into a hook punch with your back leg like that, you are asking for a ton of problems. I mean, you're, you're giving your flank. He's giving his entire flank. You're, if you're, you're a grappler is going to take your sweet ass down almost 90% of the time if you punch like this in a fight. You think people are going to stand there and let you hit like that? And then the distance, you have the proper di Shit, this guy, if, if, if his student hit him, oh, God. This is what you teach your students? Okay. You need a single technique 
So it's far more effective and far more efficient than straight blast, which is it's far more effective and far more efficient for a, a, a video demonstration. That's it. Very, very, how to say, not flexible uh, kind of attack. Hook punches are very flexible. It's far more alive. It's more flexible than a straight blast. So guys, I hope you kind of understand the difference and why Bruce went away from this and went more to boxing style of attacking when it comes to hand techniques. It's more flexible, has more power, and it's more mobile than a straight blast. And that's the reason why Bruce threw it away. So I hope you liked it and you learned something, guys, and see you next time. Um, yeah. No, I, they didn't learn anything. Well, they learned something now. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's garbage. I, I know that you, you've seen, oh, you love garbage Ving Chun. Okay, stop being Hans Gruber uh, of martial arts. We don't need that. But if you're going to wind up criticizing other people, then I'm going to tear apart your stuff when you talk about Wing Chun because you do not know what you're talking about. So you you can't mis you you can't misrepresent something if you don't know it. So I can't give you too much fault because nobody taught you. But what you just spouted off in that five minute video was misinformation. It was inaccurate depiction of Wing Chun because Wing Chun does not have a straight blast. It's a chain punch concept that does not do what you just did. The Long Ting lineage does, but it's for training on bridging a gap, and it's uh, inaccurate when it comes down to body mechanics, physics, um, structure. It's just, it's incorrect and it's a lie. So uh, yeah, I, you know, I, hopefully I did that as tastefully as possible. I personally don't like your delivery. Uh, I don't like that you're attacking uh, people that I know and I defend. I think that Howard Bland has 100 times more to offer in the Jeet Kune Do community than you do, and you're just a cookie cutter of Bruce Lee, of Tommy Carruthers of Bruce Lee. And this, if you want to keep that traditional going, then that's great. Do that. I think that's fine. But when it comes down to the evolution, you guys have evolved nothing of what Bruce Lee said because you're keeping it so close to what he wrote down. And for those who don't know, Bruce Lee didn't publish anything. All this stuff was published after his death. That's why his wife, Linda, and I, again, and I'll be the asshole, because people, I just don't like the Bruce Lee uh, culture. His daughter, Shannon, always, talk, and I've never met her, and I don't give a shit if this gains me uh, hatred in there. How do you, what are you, what were you, three or four years old when your father died? And she makes her living off of talking about, well, my father, my father, my father. I barely remember my grandfather. He died when I was eight. I toured the country talking about his World War II uh, uh, years. It would be third-party stories of what my family told me. So that's what I don't like about is so many people capitalized off of Bruce Lee's thoughts that were never put down together on paper that were meant to be a curriculum outside of his Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, which was his translation of the Wing Chun he didn't finish. And in the end... Why did he go back to Wang Sheng Lung, a guy who he could never beat, and say, would you teach me the rest of the system? Is what it is. Um, I just, I can't stand this shit. Uh, but, I mean, if we're all going to start slinging mud, then I'll be the biggest one fucking uh, with the biggest bat out here just hitting it out of the park every time. Hope you guys have a great damn day. I'll see you on the next video.